Just a quick note to let y'all know how fast I am. Breeze by you like the wind I can. Hey everyone, welcome to another Flash Vlog. Uh, if you didn't watch my announcements video, it, you should have. It's an important announcement. Please watch. I told you guys how I was moving into a new place. And right now I was in a temporary place until I could find another uh, full-time place. So it put the Flash Vlogs on hold for just a little bit. Uh, but I decided I, I, I'm going to do both Plastique and, what was it, Grinder? Garter? I don't know. The, the, gr the other one, the second episode. Uh, the, I'm going to do both of them at the same time because I've seen them both. I've just downloaded them on iTunes and I can't do this live. So uh, I'm going to look over the comments from last time, even though it was quite a while ago since there was the break and then two episodes. So it's basically been three weeks since the next Flash vlog. But I will try to get that. Okay, the first question is from All Things Super. Uh, we kind of had a conversation about this on the post, but I decided that I'll just talk about it since it's a, it is a question. He said, How will this show affect your excitement for the Flash movie? Do you still feel the need for a Flash movie, or has the show satisfied that need? Interesting question. In my mind, the way I looked at it, and I, I said this in the comment, I said how right now we have both the animated version of Batman, we have the uh, Christopher Nolan version of Batman, we have the Tim Burton version of Batman, and we have the Kevin Conroy's video game version of Batman. Basically, we have tons of versions of Batman, and I'm still not sick of him, and I'm still looking forward to him on the big screen in, in uh, Batman vs. Superman. And we also have Gotham version of Batman, and I'm still liking that as well. So in my mind, I don't I think uh, another Flash movie, a Flash movie alongside this Flash TV show, is going to just, oh well, I like the Flash TV show, and I don't really need the movie. In my mind, I, I'm going to be expecting different things from the movie than I'm expecting from a TV show. A TV show, I want a long-running narrative, character development throughout it, characters slowly building up. For a movie, I'm expecting more of a action set piece. I'm not necessarily sure if they're doing the origin or not, but, you know, maybe they should, because they they don't really have too much of the origin in the TV show if they made it more of an origin story, because it's just like after the first episode, he's the Flash and he's doing stuff. He's still learning, but he's still kind of the Flash, so if they made it more of a transition, I'm fine. What I would hesitate is if they did, like, the exact same thing, if they had, like, um, if they had Cisco and Caitlin Snow, uh, both of them, if they were in there, if they were in the movie, I'd be like, well, now I don't really see the point. But for the movie, as long as it does its own thing, separates itself from the TV show, I'll be okay with it. And if the movie sucks, I can always fall back on this TV show because I really like it. Um, King on Captain says, wow, you waste so much potato. Well, so what? It was just as good. Uh, John Constantine, I'm sure it's probably not the real John Constantine, but he says, Captain Cold in this episode says, we don't kill people, then proceeds to kill like four or five people in the episode. But I'm glad to see a respectable Captain Cold, and I can't wait to see the rest of the rogues. Uh, I'm the same way. I, uh, but I, I think more on the side of the we don't kill people, we don't murder innocent people because we don't need the heat. That's what he said, so... What the, what he means by that is if you murder innocent people on the streets, the police are going to be coming down on you hard. If you're just a thief, they might come down on you, but if they can't find you, they're not going to pursue you that hard. It'll be, you'll be on the back bench. But as soon as you start killing people, then you're a top priority sort of thing. And so when he kills people, they're low lives, and he can easily dispose of them and make sure they're not even noticed, because nobody even knows they're there. So that's that's the main difference, I think. Okay, so Plastique and um, Garter, I believe it is. These episodes are so far not really my favorite. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Clancy Brown as the general in Plastique. I think that's kind of really cool. Uh, I, did anyone else get the feeling that this episode of Plastique was very similar to the Smallville episode of Plastique, which coincidentally was the last episode of Smallville that I watched. After that, I'm just like, I'm done with this show. This is boring. At least I'm pretty sure. I might have watched like one or two afterwards, but that was the point where I was like, I'm done. 
Um, it, it's very similar in the fact that it's a girl who gets these powers. They're hunted by someone, and she befriends the hero, and the hero tries to help him, and the girl... In the, the only difference is in Smallville, the girl was actually evil, where in this one she's more of a, you know... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A She's more of a tragic character, you know, like a misunderstood, not wanting to kill people, but is willing to go to extreme measures. Uh, the, one of my biggest things was... Okay, there was... At the end of the episode, she's really flip-floppy. It's so easy for Wells to, like... Okay, this series have been done, doing a really good job of making Wells this, like, master manipulator behind everything, you know? Pulling all these strings and doing all this... Excuse me. Stuff. And all he does with her is he goes up to her and he says, Kill the general. And that's it. That's all we really get from him. He, like, he, he says it in some fancy way, of course, but I'm thinking that's pretty weak. That's more something that would raise suspicion for her. I think Wells, from what I got from him so far, would more go into some, like, you know, if only the general was dead, you probably could stay here and we could study you, but as long as you're being hunted, I can't help you. Or, if the, or something like, that, like if the general was out of the way, then that, I could believe more that she'd go to that extremes and it would be her own with her all Wells is... <gasps> oh, that was pretty pretty silly. And okay, Flash runs and says, don't do this, and then the general shoots her. The general shoots her. I'm sorry, Flash should have been able to stop that. He's way faster than a bullet. I know he's still just learning stuff, but in my mind I'm like, Flash, what are you doing? He should have been able to stop that. But overall, I thought it was good. Garter, the second episode, or Grinder, I think. Whatever it is. Okay, I'm just going to look it up so I'm not wrong. Anyway, uh, this one... There's some parts about it. I like that they didn't draw this whole Barry's going to be mad at Iris and they're not going to hang out for very long. I like that they just had this one episode where they weren't really friends and then this thing happens and he's like, I don't want to do that because that's not Barry's style. He's not one that can shut everyone out and just do it on his own. He needs other people and he's that type of character. Now, the thing with it is I actually like the scenes with Barry and Iris as when Barry's the Flash. I like how he's like twin with her and how she's like awestruck with wonder and amazement. I actually really, this is like the first time that I've really enjoyed Iris and how she is desperate, or not desperate, but she's really willing to go to any lengths to make sure that um, she finds more out about this guy. And I like how Barry's kind of still going there because he's at odds with Iris as Barry, but he's not as the Flash, and so he wants to talk to her, so he goes to her as the Flash. And you know what? That's kind of cool. Oh, by the way, I love Barry's new voice that... I love how it's not like Oliver's, which is really deep and dark. It's more light, but it's echoey enough that you can't tell. And they're really doing a good job whenever Barry's near somebody he knows with the whole face moving really fast so you can't exactly see that it's him. Okay, now time to... I want to talk about the, the endings of both episodes because both episodes had a little bit of... a uh, little bit of stuff to talk about. Of course, the ending of... Plastique, we get Grodd, and I was like, holy shoot, because, like, Will says he wanted to get into this mind control stuff, and I said no, and then I didn't click in my head, didn't click that it was could have been Grodd, and it's Grodd, and we see a little bit of him in the shadows. I was thinking, how much more cooler would this have been if we didn't see the Grodd cage in the beginning? You know, what if, like, there was no cage, if there was no Grodd cage at all, and this was the first introduction to him? I would have been like, holy shoot, they're actually doing Grodd! And if they kept it on the download that they're doing Grodd and didn't tell anyone, imagine how much bigger your minds would have been blown. I'm, look, my, minds are, my mind was still blown, but it was more of a, where if they kept it a secret, it would have been like, and then on the end of the uh, the Flash is born, we okay we have this whole thing with Wells and um, oh shoot we have this whole thing with Joe and Doctor Wells where Joe's kind of suspicious of Wells and doesn't really know 
much about Well or wanting to know more and maybe is considering Wells a suspect. And at the end of the episode, we got Joe just looking over the case files. I love how Joe is like as obsessed of this as Barry now because he feels he owes it to uh, Barry's dad. And then, boom. <laughs> yellow light. Yellow lightning light. And it's the reverse flash. And he leaves just a photo on the wall that says, Stop or else. And there's a knife through Iris's face of a photo. Um, really good. Here's the thing with Wells. We know he's from the future. We know he is... Um planning and trying to protect Barry. We don't know necessarily know why, but he's going to extremes. Now, a lot of people say, well, he's obviously the reverse Flash. I hope so, because here's my theory. What if, and I'm just hypothesizing, what if, you know, we have Eddie Th Thwain, or whatever, uh, the, the cop. And a lot of people say, well, is he the reverse flash? Is he the reverse flash? I'm thinking, what if? Something that uh, I've been considering. What if Wells is a descendant of Eddie? You know, because in the comics, the reverse flash's name isn't Eddie Thwain. It's Eobod Thane. Eobod. Because he's from the future, and the future has weird names. So, if they had the angle where... It was Eobod Thane from the future, but he went back in time, gave them the self Henry Wells, so he sounds very familiar to H.G. Wells, you know, the time machine, da 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 da, -da. Um, and he, and he was, you know, that's, that'd be an interesting twist, you know, and then we could have Wells maybe trying to, uh, um, manipulate his descendant later on, or maybe once I figure that out, that there's that whole thing with, is Eddie gonna turn evil? I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do with it. I'm actually really... I, I hope that uh, Wells is the reverse Flash, because he's too cool, too awesome to be anyone else, in my mind. Okay, that's, I think, it for me. Thanks for watching, everybody. I don't think I have anything else to say about this. I'm looking forward to... Oh, wait, wait, one more thing. Garter. Horrible villain. Horrible. Plastique was okay, you know? They had some different themes going on and whatever. But making him a childhood bully from Barry's past, and he's like, Sup, Iris? Look at my biceps. Yeah, I'm a wanted man, but you'll still be into me, right? No. What? No. Uh, and I don't get it. I don't... It, that felt very Smallville, Lana Lang, bad guy, crypto freak to me. Uh, because it's just... No, it's just... No, because it was so cliched and so typical. I'm just like, why? Why did he have to be a bully from Barry's past? Why couldn't he have been someone who reminded him of Barry's past? Why did he have to be after Iris? Why couldn't have Iris just been... Why couldn't he have been after Iris because of her blog going more on to uh, the risks that Barry takes? You know, a guy who wants to hog all the spotlight is fine, but why Iris? And maybe it's because of the blog. I'm just saying that I didn't like how it was a coincidence that this bully from Barry's past... Oh, and that scene with the kids felt like, oh my gosh, it felt like I was watching a PSA. That was so bad. Barry's just like, yeah, science is fun. I'm a bully. <laughs> Horrible. I mean, like, that was really bad. Really bad. I was just like, oh my gosh, this is... Besides that, he's a forgettable... And Barry showed his mask to him in the end. Why would you do that? Look, knowledge is power, and the fact that he just wanted to rub it in his past bully's face and, na 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 na, -na you're in a prison, I'm in a... not a prison, and I'm super fast, na na, -na, -na. No. That's just... Doesn't work. You, you gotta accept every possibility. Barry's a scientist. He should know this. And there could be a possibility that one of these days they come across a metahuman they put in jail and they, they can't contain and that they all get out. And if that happens, and if Jules, Wells turns into a supervillain, I think that very well could happen. But you got somebody that knows Barry's secret identity. Anyway, that's about it. And I... I still like the show, still looking forward to what comes next, but these two episodes aren't really- Be sure to check out more of my other videos on my channel, and wait for more coming soon.